Hello friends, welcome to another video in the NAT Operations and Concepts module. In this video we'll be discussing terminology that have to do with network address translation. If you've looked at NAT or researched NAT in any way before, you've probably come across these four words. These four words make up every different way of performing network address translation. Now if you look at those words, they are made up of two different sets of two different terms. We have the words NAT and the words PAT, and then we have the words static versus dynamic. What I want to do in this particular lesson is outline what each of these words mean individually so that later on when we look at the combined form you know exactly what is going on. We'll start with the words NAT versus PAT. So every packet as it crosses the internet includes a few different headers. It's got the data payload, it's got a layer 4 header, and a layer 3 header. The layer 3 header has things like the source IP address and the destination IP address. And the layer 4 header would include the TCP or UDP header and the source port and destination port. The words NAT and PAT have to do with which parts of this packet are being translated. For example, if as this packet crosses a router, the only thing that changes is the layer 3 address, you have what's known as a NAT. NAT stands for Network Address Translation, and if a packet is being translated and only the layer 3 header is modified, you have a NAT. By comparison, if as the packet crosses a router, you modify both the layer 3 and the layer 4 header, notice here the IP address is different and the ports are different, you have what's known as a PAT. A PAT stands for a Port Address Translation, and a PAT's definition is a modification of both the layer 3 and the layer 4 header. So when you think of NAT, think modification of layer 3 header, and when you think of PAT, think modification of the layer 3 and the layer 4 header, which means the IP addresses and the ports. Now, there is a way to do a PAT that only modifies the layer 4 header, but that's pretty rare. Most of the time when you're doing a modification of the layer 4 header, you're also modifying the layer 3 header. So it's pretty safe to memorize PAT as a modification of both the layer 3 and the layer 4 header. Which brings us to the next two terms, static versus dynamic. So what I'm going to do is show you the definitions of each and then show you an illustration to explain it. The definition of a static translation is one where the administrator creates an explicit mapping between the pre-translation attributes and the post-translation attributes. By comparison, the definition of a dynamic translation is one where the pre-translation attributes are defined by the administrator, but the post-translation attributes are selected by the translation device. Now I'm going to show you examples of both of these to help illustrate these concepts. Here's the topology we'll be using. Now in our topology, we'll be using a router as our translation device, but do keep in mind many different devices can do NAT. Uh, firewalls can do NAT, load balancers can do NAT, even servers can do NAT if you configure them to do so. Either way, our topology is going to have three hosts with private addresses on the inside, and then this cloud over here will represent the internet. So let me show you what a static translation looks like. The definition we gave you is that a static translation is an explicit mapping between pre-translation attributes and post-translation attributes. So an example of a static translation would be if I configured my router to do something like this. To translate the IP address 106661, which is host A's IP address, to the IP address 7294.11. What this would do is it would make it so that whenever host A shoots out a packet to the internet, as soon as that packet crossed the router, the router would replace host A's IP address as the source IP address in the packet with 7294.11. Moreover, on the way back, whenever the return traffic was coming back to host A, the router would do the opposite and replace the IP address 7294.11 back to host A's IP address. That is an example of a static translation. Notice the router never had to make any decisions. Anytime it saw this, it translated it to this, and anytime it saw this, it translated it to this. A dynamic translation would look like this. If I configured my router to translate anything in the 1066.0 slash 24 network, which is the inside network, to one of these three IP addresses, what would happen is let's say host A shoots out a packet. When this packet crosses my router, host A might receive from the router the IP address .22. And then when host B shoots out a packet, host B might receive from the router 
the IP address .24. And then when host C shoots out a packet, host C might receive an IP address from the router of .23. You'll notice, even though the administrator defined the scope of what is being translated and what it is being translated to, the device actually made the decision of which host gets which IP address. Since the device had to make that decision, this is known as a dynamic translation. You as the administrator, even though you configure this, you have no way of knowing ahead of time which IP address will go to which host. That is the definition of a dynamic translation. So in this section, we looked at the definitions of the words NAT and PAT and the definitions of the words static and dynamic. For NAT and PAT, the difference was a NAT only modifies the layer 3 header, aka only modifies the IP address. And for PAT, a PAT modifies both the layer 3 and the layer 4 header, aka modifies both the IP addresses and the ports. And then a static translation is simply an explicitly defined mapping between the pre-translation attributes and the post-translation attributes, whereas a dynamic translation, the translation device is actually choosing the final post-translation attributes. If you understand these terms, you can then have a basic definition of what each of these four possible translations do. And we're going to pick these apart in the next few lessons in this module. The key takeaway from this lesson is understanding what the words static and dynamic mean and what the words nat versus pat mean. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you in the next one. Hey YouTube, want to learn more? Check out the rest of the free network address translation videos. Then, when you're ready to take it a step further, check out these courses which teach you how to configure, verify, and troubleshoot NAT on Cisco routers and firewalls. As always, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you, and have a wonderful day.